Hello and welcome to episode 34 of Me Dark Presents Scary Movie Madness. If you're just joining us for the first time, remember to like and subscribe. Follow us everywhere at Me Dark Presents. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. All streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Oh, that's right. All the those fun portion. things. You always forget that part. But I mean, mm-hmm. I think the visual is such an important part of what we provide. Yes. Not to mention the work it takes you. <laughs> Yeah, but it's fun. I'm just the talent at this point. Oh, you're the talent, not well, me. Well, meaning that's my only role is talent. Okay. Not the talent, but I'm only talent. Well, I'm going to announce one of my talents because I'm very excited about launching The Pig, my first short film. Oh, snap. Um, so it's available now. You can go and watch it on my YouTube channel, which is Red Octopus Films. If you like it and you dig the work, I definitely got more coming up. So if you want to keep up with what I'm doing, follow Red Octopus Films everywhere. And we'll be posting about the stuff on Me Dark also, the sort of yeah. cross promote there. So if you love what we do, look up Red Octopus. We'll put some links here. We got Instagram. We've got a TikTok going. We've got YouTube for it. Yep. I'm trying to just throw you out there. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, it's not enough to be the filmmaker or the creator. You got to promote it and you got to be a personality. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. What's cool, though, is I, you know, I'd mentioned on the last episode that we got picked up to be on this new streaming service called Rise Flix, which that has gone live as well, which is pretty cool. I think you should check it out. It's it's free to join. Mm-hmm. Um, so really no downside. And they, uh, they're actually featuring my film. The Pig is like the, that's like the first film to be featured. Um, which is kind of pretty cool. heavily. Yeah, as soon as you as soon as you sign on, it's our movie is the first thing to play. Like, I think you're downplaying how legit that is. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. If I'm, it was me, I'd be shouting from the rafters like, "I'm the main page." <laughs> but I guess that's not your style. That's more me. <laughs> that's definitely yeah. It's definitely that's definitely more your style. Um. So yeah, let's now we're we're officially in spooky season now. So. Yay! Let's dive into, I want to focus more on, you know, scarier movies, I think, than because Ari Aster was cool to dissect as a filmmaker. We love his style, but I think now is when we want to be like scared, scared when we watch something. It's just a different vibe, y'all. Like, yeah. you got to go deep. I was just talking to someone on my team and I was like, what are you doing tonight? And he's like, probably going to get into some Halloween movies. You know, we're going to go with the classic Halloween. And immediately I'm triggered. Oh, yeah. Immediately triggered. Why? I oh, love the gonna, classic Halloween. That's fine, but like they ended it, right? Like the last yeah. franchise owner ended it. Yeah. And that was controversial in and of itself, right? Like forget all the shitty ones. It was and just, they had to end it. They did. So we're like, okay, great. You ended it. But it was, it didn't even end well. We ripped that apart. That's an episode that you can But I find. think, I'll stop you there though, because I think it was impossible for it to even end. Like how do you end that? You know what well, I mean? It's such a hard landing to stick. Agreed. But now, when mm-hmm. we think it's over, there's apparently a bidding war over the franchise. You're you kidding, hear about this? You're kidding me. No, no, no. no. Stop it. <laughs> I'm dead ass. And what's really going to send you is who do you think is the lead runner to take that over? To buy the Halloween franchise? To take the name? rights to... and start it up again. Oh, jeez. I don't know. Take it, a guess. Is it, like, um, is it like Netflix or something? Nope. <clears throat> Who? I am so angry. Why? It is A24. They really? have thrown their hat in the ring. They want to take this. And like we just talked about this, that y'all. Like yeah. they're out there doing original content. They're giving us fresh and new and killing it. And it's like, come on, please don't do this. Don't give in to the corporate capitalist suits. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Well, yeah, because again, I'd like for just new things to be made. Right. It's just enough, like enough. We've had enough. And they're not failing. So other exciting news, we have a giveaway coming up. It's, listen, this is going to be an awesome one. Yes. Right? I don't want to get, I'm, I'm, we'll tease it here. It's (laughs) going to, it's a nice, it's a really nice prize, actually. It's (laughs) awesome. Um, So I'm really, I'm excited to give this thing away. Um, It's actually coming from a, a company that I used to work for called sideshow collectibles they have awesome stuff yeah um so this is going to be a meaty prize you don't want to miss it when are we, are we going to announce that next week yep so 
We will be all set to announce the details and how you can win. So look out for that in next week's podcast. We'll also post the rules on our social channels. All right. So we'll we'll let them know what it is and how they can enter. Exactly. All right. Awesome. I'm excited about that. Get ready, y'all. <laughs> Let's move on then to our uh, our first movie segment here. And I, yeah. I, I just happened upon this scrolling, I think, Prime Video or something. You know, when you're just sort of like trying to find something to watch. And then, you know, you sit on something a little too long and the trailer starts to play. Yeah. The trailer for this movie is actually what hooked me into wanting to watch it. Totally. They nailed doing the trailer. It's great. And then, you know, I realized it was Rob Zombie and I was I was a little skeptical because, you know, I'm not the biggest Rob Zombie fan. You can always tell, though, like one of my likes, actually, right, is that Rob Zombie has this style that you see it and you just know. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt. Like he nails the grunge, dirty places that nobody should ever see type sets that just tell you it's a Rob Zombie movie, right? Yeah. And then he pairs it with the most down, dirty, grungy humans that you don't want to believe could ever exist. Yeah. I, he's sort of like, uh, and I agree with you on, he definitely has his own style. But. He's sort of like too homage for me. He follows a little bit too much of like the horror template. Oh, like you that, can yes, tell for that sure. you can tell that he grew up in a certain time, like the 70s probably was very impressionable, totally. impressionable for him. Yeah, most of his movies are in that era. Yeah, he's sort of there that style that you're talking about, I think borrows from a Grand lot of House that sort of style era. of horror. And and his stories and the characters that he create sort of well not sort of they i think they do just directly kind of fit inside of a paint by numbers here's how to make a horror movie yep and i think this movie 31 it comes out in 2016 is a, it's a prime example of this yeah. this sort of templated horror i'll call it and i don't i'm not necessarily going to call it a knock on rob zombie because i think to his credit he does he makes like fun, entertaining films, which I really do appreciate. I will say one thing about Rob Zombie's films is as a woman, you are terrified because really? he's very big into the R word and sexual aggression and things like that. I That I get. Whenever there's the R word, as you put it, thrown into the I mix. don't want to say it because yeah. it's triggering, so okay. I'm keeping it out. But people yeah. can assume what I mean. I understand uh, <laughs> wholeheartedly. So circling back to the types of characters that tend to pop up over and over again in his movies, he uses the same actors over and over yeah, again. Yeah, and that's one of my dislikes. Yeah. I don't like that. And his wife being one of them, Sherry Moon Zombie, as she plays Charlie, who is that strong lead female in this one. What I do like about her is she plays a great lunatic woman. You can't hold her down. You can't scare her. Uh, there's a whole mess of characters in this movie with really wonderful names, right? <laughs> yeah. We got Malcolm McDowell as Father Murder. He is cast as Dr. Loomis in Rob Zombie's Halloween movies. We have Jeff Daniel Phillips as Roscoe Pepper. Like, what, what a, a name. great name. Meg Foster plays Venus Virgo. So she's sort of like the stronger female character. She's got the rugged face and the... She's older. She's, you know, a little seen more. seen some shit. Yeah. She's got like an Ellen Ripley kind of vibe <laughs> yeah. going with her. Poncho Moeller <laughs> as Sickhead. He plays the little, the little this person. This is now you're getting into the, the yeah. killers. Aspect. The killer. They're all, they're all some sort of a head. So he's Sickhead. But circling all the way back, the reason I watched this movie is it's because of this. one character and one character alone. This one character. Richard Brake plays Doomhead. Right, which interestingly enough, he was also in the movie Doom with The Rock, oh, look which at that. was that uh, video game. Nah, I know what it is. Yeah. And he's also in the other movie we'll be talking about later, Barbarian. Mm-hmm. Which is um, what ties this episode together. Yeah, it sort of springboarded me back to watch Barbarian, and then I felt mm-hmm. like we should pair them together. Yep. But yeah, so Richard Brake, he puts on this awesome scene. What a performance of Doomhead. I mean... Just the entryway when you meet him. When we kick right into the yes. movie and it's yep. the black and white. He's got a priest tied up to a chair. They're in like some drippy dungeon, yes. foggy, That's right. great little atmosphere. He's got the light blasting from behind. Some great contrast there. It's just a hopeless 
feeling scene. It's great. You know, and and again, like the performance of Doomhead is so wild. It's so intense. The dialogue is just amazing. It's again, great. Barbaric. Actual violence spewing from his mouth. And you know that there's no mercy to be had. Like no. as he's just tearing into th- this priest, like basically explaining to him, like you're gonna die, and here's what's gonna happen to you. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like about it was the ending, right? Because he has this great line right before he's going to deliver the blow. Mm-hmm. He holds up the axe and he sort of looks at it and he goes, I'm sorry I forgot to sharpen this beforehand. Yeah. Right. For me, I thought he's going to blast this guy and then it's going to get like stuck. And he leads into that after yeah. that. He kind of insinuates that it's going to take a few blows. It's going to take a few blows. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's going to get stuck and he's oh, going to yeah. like have Michael. to twist out and like this guy's guts are going to rip. I'm ready for like the most bloody, violent kill. Because yeah. this guy's really... Blood spewing everywhere, splapped in the face, like boop. Yeah, he's ramped me up at this point. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go. This is going to be huge. Mm-hmm. And no, it's just like <laughs> he hits him in the stomach, <sighs> pulls it out, and then just like hits him again and that's it. And this is my problem with the character in general. Really? Because he was set up as so terrifying, so ruthless. Like, you're never going to ever escape me. I'm going to win. There's no way. He's got this hopeless, like, this is the ultimate murderer that you're going to encounter and there's no way out. Mm -hmm. And then every instance later on, he gets the most incapacitated victim and he kills them in two seconds. Right. But he is, like, in terms of my likes in the movie, it's pretty much him. Oh, agreed. Agreed. Right? Because the, con- the best part of the film, I I don't yeah. disagree. The concept is okay. Th- this idea essentially that you know wealthy elites. Yeah, it's it's like Squid Game basically. Squid That's game. the best way I can describe. Well, it. Well before Squid Game. Yeah, but in this instance, it's like it's like Squid Game meets Saw. The idea being that there's these rich people observing this and they're betting on who's going to win, right? They, don't they like that? They, they announce they like, the let odds. the game begin. Like, I think the concept, again, is cool. Because obviously it's cool in Squid Game. The Squid Game concept is mm-hmm. cool. Is cool. Saw is kind of cool. But it's the story that makes Squid Game. Like, that's what yeah. I, you know, Squid Game has such an interesting. I think that's, you've nailed it. His stories, Rob Zombie's stories, there is nothing to them. There's yeah. no point. What is really the arc or the point of it other than, wouldn't it be cool if we just unleash some murderous killers out on some innocent people and somebody bets on them? And I'm like, well, that's. Yeah. That's a concept, but what's the story? Yeah. There I really mean, it isn't is terrifying one. to think that you're in a place you don't know. It's dark. It's dirty. It's clearly dangerous. And there's a psycho murderer running around. You don't know what he's, where yeah. he is, when he's going to pop out, how he's going to get you. <laughs> but I see, <laughs> That is I, my nightmare. But, but that's not what happens. And that's, I know. that's my problem with it is instead of these killers that are being unleashed, actually being scary and threatening and, and giving you the vibe of that. Something bad is about to happen to them. They're goofy. They're like professional wrestlers. They're painted like clowns. They're same doing clown like thing. a professional wrestling bit, right? To your point, it's mixed with things like I'm going to R word you and, <laughs> you know, whatever. But at, at its core, yeah, it's men in like makeup and a costume giving you the professional wrestler stick about how I'm going to kill you. And, <laughs> and it's, it's comical. This is actually where we sort of disagreed because I was actually complaining about the cinematography while we were watching it. Do you yeah. remember this? Yes. The lighting started to, to bother me because I I think it looked so much better in black and white. I almost wonder if like if you're not going to go black and white with it, maybe go even more grindhousey. Like go Love over the, the top with the grindhouse. So yeah. and then on top of it, triple the amount of gore. A hundred percent. Right, because that was. That was one of my dislikes. I was like, for what this movie is aiming to be and what I what I would appreciate about it would be a, tons of gore. Like I was saying in the beginning with Doomhead, like I wanted that kill to be really gruesome and and, and brutal. And yeah. it just wasn't. It just needed more gore. Oh, right? yeah, 100%. Yeah. Especially from Rob Zombie. Overall, what did you think of the acting? You know, let's go to the scorecard here. Let's pull up the scores. Um, I mean, it's okay. Okay. I gave it a, it's not terrible. Like, well, no, like it wasn't I said, that. his movies, you know, he's, they're fun. Yeah. It's fun. So I'm giving it a two. Yeah. There is a lot of cheesy acting in this, but I would, I'm giving it style. a two because it works within the style. Right. Like I said, it's not a one. One is like that. Yeah. 
actor guy in it's Bloody like, Valentine where we were like, stay oh a model, God. bro. Um, what are you giving it for effects? Um, same, a two. Like we said, there wasn't a ton of gore, so there wasn't really a lot there, I don't think. What is the... I'm trying to think back. I mean, what is the most brutal kill? I mean, mostly it's them killing the killers. Those yeah. are the more brutal They're ones. actually so brutal, which is why they bring Doomhead in. Because yeah, like, they're I mean, savage. They're like, that's it. We must them, bring yeah. in the top tier. <laughs> It's like, really? Because Dr. Loomis now they're all fucking handicapped. And why doesn't Dr. Loomis bring in Michael Myers? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Father man. Murder. Too soon. Too soon. Father Murder. He Father could, Murder. He could have made that. Let's do a let's do Doomhead versus Mike Myers in a I'm just saying, series. <laughs> Rob Zombie clearly was allowed to make a Halloween movie with Michael Myers. Just bring Michael Myers into 31. Uh, no, I don't think that would have worked. And now it's called 31 because they do it on Halloween. Yeah. Effects, I give it a two. It's just, it's average. Uh, yeah, gore, I gave it a two as well. Yeah. Two is across Same the board. Same thing. Here. I want, like, a Rob Zombie movie at this level, you better be giving me a three or four. Like, yeah. that's what I'm looking for from you because you're a savage in the dialogue. You're a savage in how you're presenting these characters. But then every scene was just, like, short on, like, the satisfaction of the kill. Yep. And then scare factor, I'm giving it a one. I mean, again, your concept is good. But then your killers are just foolishly goofy. I mean, other yeah. than Doomhead, right? So I'm going to disagree as a woman and give you the two for the reasons I All stated right. earlier. The as two, a woman watching it, I'm uncomfortable as shit. Yeah, because there's the two guys that are dressed as clowns with chainsaws. This is your worst nightmare. Right? A chainsaw still to me is one of the scariest weapons. Yeah. One wrong move and you're not going to get the results you were hoping for. <laughs> Story-wise, one. Again, Us. there's no point. What story? You're you're in it for the characters, yeah. which I think I think that's fine too. I, I, or the chase and to see what happens. Yeah, that's it. I, I think that's and I think that's okay. I think that Rob Zombie is more of that sort of a, yeah. a storyteller, if I could say it that way. Is he's just telling it through these characters and the visual in his, in his mind. He just he's creating these wacky characters and he's just putting them in a wild scenario. And he it's almost like a little like playground for him, where it's like here's what could kind of happen if. The, you know, if Doomhead comes in, like he's like a little kid playing with toys. It's cool. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's funny to me, like the more I think about it, it's like his characters are rooted in YMH's TikTok world. Uh -huh. Like the sh things that Christina P finds. And yes. we're just like, where does that happen? Right. Where does that exist? Rob Zombie's mind is right there. Yeah. In that world that we will never see of people we will never interact with, <laughs> <laughs> that we don't want to believe are real. But they are. I mean, I wonder if he has some sort of um, like, I, I don't know anything about his childhood or his upbringing or maybe like maybe there's some sort of a direct tie that he has to the, the, those types of characters. Like, did he grow up in those kind of environments, maybe? Or it could just be as simple as, like I said before, he's just very much influenced by those characters or, yeah. in movies that he saw. when he We did up. not do our homework on that. Clearly, right. probably should have um rewatchability one I, no. you know that being said i don't i don't need to watch this movie ever no again. i don't even know if i need you to watch it for yourselves i would say <laughs> watch the trailer and enjoy the best parts of what we saw yeah i think it would be worth it just to check out richard brake's performance as doomhead i think is a lot of fun I, I dig the character yeah so watch the opening scene and then fast forward like 45 minutes in and then watch the end mm -hmm. <laughs> and you'll still get the whole story and you'll be good <laughs> All right, well, then let's move on to movie number two, which, you know, R Richard Brake was responsible for jumping us back to Barbarian because I had remembered that he was in this movie. Oh, how, I mean, his demeanor and his delivery and all that, like, you're just like, oh, I know that guy. Mm -hmm. yeah, he has a very recognizable, he's a good, like, bad guy face. For you know? sure. So Barbarian came out last year. It's written and directed by Zach Kreger, which he's one of the creators of that show, The Whitest Kids You'd Know. Mm-hmm had a little bit of a run in the 2000s. Uh, they're like a comedy troupe kind of team, which is interesting that this guy's coming from comedy and he's making this really, what I think is a pretty scary movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This movie checks all the boxes. So let's go to the cast on this one. Bill Skarsgård as Keith. Obviously, instantly recognizable. Those as, eyes, man. As Pennywise from It. Can't hide it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's got, he's just got a, a face, man. He's, he's got, got a mug. He's got a mug on him. He is also in uh, this, there's a really cool movie on Netflix that he's in called The Devil All the Time, which I highly recommend. Have I seen that? I don't think you watched it with me, no. 
but it's it that that's a great watch hmm. that that's sort of like a an, uh, an eerie kind of, it's not a scary movie but it has like an eerie um Fun. ominous tone to it it's very it's like a, a dreadful film oh. if i could say okay dreadful um, hopeless all mm-hmm. terrible but the lead here is georgina campbell she plays tess and I know her from one of my favorite Black Mirror episodes, Hang the DJ. I love Black Mirror. I told you the other day I would love to do an episode where we rank the top five scariest. Black I got to watch them, though, because I didn't really watch in depth the first two seasons. Yeah, no, we'll go back and watch. We'll, yeah. You know, we'll do our homework on that one because it's worth it. And I would love to. I've been wanting a reason to go back and rewatch them all. And this is a great Yeah, I really liked season. the new season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, she's great in this. And then we also have Justin Long as AJ. Love Justin Long. Mm-hmm. I guess his closest horror movie would be Tusk. Right? Oh, Tusk. Tusk is wild. Wild. Uh, it's Sharon. actually funny because it's in the realm of this one where you just, again, you can't predict what happens next. Yeah, I love the unpredictability. That's always much needed in horror movies. Yeah. And I think right away this movie starts with a bit of unpredictability. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about the setup of this movie? Because I, I just I want to get the the woman perspective yeah. of Tess pulling up to this Airbnb, right? She rented it on or whatever, one, it's something like that. And that was my life for so long, traveling by myself and mm-hmm. like having to go sometimes to Airbnbs and weird places and be a woman alone. And yeah, sometimes flights are delayed and you're you're getting there at night. And that's the scenario here is like she's getting there late. Yeah. She's in a pitch black neighborhood and there's the house with the light on and she can't get in there. You know, she can't get into the lockbox. Then she mm-hmm. finally does. She gets in there. Get, now the key isn't there. It's right. raining. It's nighttime. And as a woman, your heart is pounding. Like, you're like, oh, my God, I just traveled all day. I'm in this weird-ass neighborhood. It's late. What do I do? The landlord's not answering. It's horrifying. It is. It's a terror. I think it's It's a terror. anxiety-inducing. It's a terrifying setup. Even for me, I was like, oh, geez, I would hate to be in this situation. She even tries to call the person that she's renting it from. They don't answer, obviously. There's, you know... Obviously, they're not. It's the middle of the night. Yeah, Yeah, you're not. (laughs) But um, but yeah, and then it's you know it sets off from there the series of events of you know meeting Keith. The scenario is, of course, that they've both rented the same house at Mm -hmm. the same time. I remember watching it the first time and just saying to myself, like, "Oh, is he actually going to be the bad guy in this? Like, I can't tell. Like, is he genuine? Is he honest? Set up ambiguously on purpose. And I think that's what the the brilliance of this is. And I think there's even a little bit of a subconscious thing going on with the casting of Bill Skarsgård. I really deeply feel this because after you see him as Pennywise in It, even without all the makeup on and him just looking like a regular dude. (laughs) Yeah. I can I still see this terrifying creature in his eyes. He's tall and like yeah, he has those wide eyes and mm-hmm. that stare and this kind of like the slow talking yes. aspect. Like there's just something about how he plays this person. Yeah. That it's like I want to believe he's mm-hmm. good, but something is telling me he's maybe not and that there may be bad intentions. This is such a great setup for later on Justin Long's character when we learn that he's the one that owns the house, right? And we learn what a disaster he is in his life, which perfectly explains how they could have rented this place at the exact same time. It's totally plausible. Yep. So I love that it's not just like a setup for plot's sake. There's actually a tie into a character in the story. I think that's great writing. Yeah, I agree. And then he makes her tea and she doesn't drink it. And they outwardly reference that, right? Like it's part of the combo. I think one of my favorite exchanges is the wine bottle. Oh, yeah. I love the exchange. I love the exchange with the wine bottle Mm because she goes to take a shower, freshen up. He wants to open the wine because to his point, he's like, I'm wide awake now. Like, what the hell? Like, I'm I'm not going to be able to go back. I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep after this. So he's like, I really want some of this wine. But now... Him, you know, thinking logically, he goes, well, it's not, she didn't drink the tea. Well, that's where he right? outwardly says it. Yeah. So let me wait to open the, and when he goes into this whole spiel about why he waited to open the wine, and Bill Skarsgård, his performance is great. It's just like so, this perfect, anxious, fumbly sort of aware. rant. Yeah. But very aware that like, I know you don't trust me. Yeah. And he's like I meticulously touching the top of the bottle, <laughs> yeah. like trying to yeah. navigate his way through the, the waters. And yeah. then in the end, it, she, she's just like, I'm good. Thanks. Like, yeah. <laughs> she just doesn't want any anyway. She's like, nope, I'm still not doing it. 
this is actually because they're washing the sheets. That's common courtesy. <laughs> it's common courtesy. Yeah, I mean, if you have so, an, if you have an an unexpected guest, yeah, and you know they have to stay over for whatever reason, you're not going to give them dirty linens to sleep <laughs> on. Like who does that? <laughs> well, in this case, it's you know it's so important that at three a.m. they wash sheets. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, at that point, I'll just sleep on the couch, man. It's too much work. Like I'm just saying. Well, he's going to sleep on the couch. Right, but he convinces her to sleep in the bed, mm-hmm. and the stipulation is she needs fresh sheets. Yeah. And I'm like. Just sleep on the couch. I don't know. Like it's too so much then work for three in the morning. She's supposed to sleep on the couch. Yeah, I'm saying chivalry just, is is dead. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying appreciate you. I need fresh sheets. We'll deal with that tomorrow. Okay. So they go to sleep, and, and the, the red flags really begin. Yeah, the door opens on its own, and she thinks it's him. He's going through like the night terrors. The night terrors thing is wild. That is because it's such a great juxtaposition to it happening. Like it's like she wakes up to the door opening, and simultaneously he's screaming. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's cool. It's it, and again, it's like this little jarring thing that happens where they, which sort of leads to that unpredictability, right? Because we're still not really sure if is he's, he bad or if good. He's good or bad. Yeah. There is a lot of this element of the yellow light, and I was looking into that, and it is about highlighting um, different things like joy and happiness, and yeah, you know, kind be. of putting this positive light, which is an interesting juxtaposition to what feels menacing about him but isn't Mm. you know and it's like but the yellow light is there like generally in a movie you're gonna think it's like a subtle hint that this guy is good so i'm curious if that was a choice of it could be purposeful i I tell you one thing that's very purposeful which i absolutely loved and i noticed the connection of it is so great when they go into the basement and they finally discover you know, the beginnings of what is go- ultimately going to be like the most terrifying thing imaginable. Oh, yeah. There's a secret door that leads to this really darkened tunnel, mm-hmm. which there's no light really to be had. Um, and she does this cool thing where she moves the mirror over and she does the little light, light reflection to look down. Yeah. Um, when she finally goes in, though, for the first time, up until this point, there's not really been music or really sort of any kind of score in the movie. She steps in and all of a sudden you hear this really tense, ominous music start to play. Mm-hmm. And it's such a nice little shift to and nod to the viewer to go, where she's going is not going to be good. Nope. Yeah. But you still don't know at this point. No, but, you, but at Who this point, that's a great little trigger mechanism because this actually excited my fear bones of like, all right, this is going to be, I'm scared. Like, where yeah. is this going? But at the same time, like, again, when I think about all the choices she made and the things that she didn't do because she was like nervous, how does this not make you run all the way back home? Like, I know she's got a job. Well, she does try to run. Remember, this is a perfect scenario because she finds that room with the camera and the dirty bed and she runs for her life. No, meaning I'm talking before that, Mark. I'm not even going that far. Oh, why even go in there? Why the even? Place? Once I found oh, that geez, door, you got a good point. I am out. The right. red flags have been there. And at this moment, I don't care how important. This, if this job is important, then I will drive two hours. Wherever there's a hotel, somewhere for me to sleep, I am out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't. No, go, thank you. I wouldn't go in there either. I mean, how far? You wouldn't even make it an inch. No, so you wouldn't. The music wouldn't even kick in. Goodbye, Brightmoor population. Yeah. Not me. No, I, thank you. I have to say the same. I th- and I think I, now that you're saying this, I remember when we watched it. I I had said this out loud, and you were like, "100 percent." We were agreeing. The minute I woke up the following day and actually observed this neighborhood around me. I didn't even get there yet, but right? yeah. Right? That's it. I would have left out. my shit. And she even goes to her little convention or whatever, right? And then she tells her colleague or whoever that is that she, oh, I'm where staying she's- Oh, in Brightmore. Yeah, and that girl's like, yeah, uh, you should not be no. Staying. And that was signal number one. Yeah. And then she goes back to the house and finds the room like you did. So I'm saying like the door opens in the middle of the night. You got this guy squatting in your Airbnb and he's having night terrors. And then you come in the daytime, the neighborhood's a shithole and you have a dungeon to hell in the basement. I am gone. I love the subversion with the um, the homeless guy that runs after her. Yeah. Be scared of him. Nope. That man is helping you. 
Right, but you don't know that. No. Again, it's like the that, un- that unpredictability is nice. And the way that they reveal things is really purposeful. I, mm-hmm. I love that. I appreciate it. Because he does seem very menacing from our perspective yeah. at this point, which our perspective is tense. And looking at the neighborhood, you're just like, yeah. this is a place that's unsafe. Yeah, we, again, at this point, I'm not coming back here. But nonetheless, she goes in. And she finds the room. She finds the room. And this is enough to make her go, all right, finally, this is her trigger point. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the hell out of here. And just in time for Keith to come back from wherever the hell Keith yeah. has been. So oh. he has to go see it for himself, which again, I'm not going down there, but he decides to. But he goes way too far down this tunnel by himself. Mm-hmm. Now, I think it's supposed to be that he just goes to the room and I guess our monster must get him because he said something bit me yeah right so i'm guessing maybe that's meant to be that he's bit he's disoriented and starts running the wrong way yeah because this place is crazy in that sense like there's a lot of that but i just find it hard to believe because he's so clearly running into just darkness whereas he would know that's not the right way he's not far enough away to not see light the room is at an end of a hallway and then there's another door that's like, okay, now you're going down, Mm -hmm. but it stops. She is in sort of a bit of a conundrum, right? Because she she has to go after Keith, right? When he goes down there and doesn't come back. Yeah. You know, she feels responsible because she promised him, like he said, please do not leave until I come back. But call the police. Yeah. Don't go down there. Like again, this is a human nature. The police test. didn't help her though. They checked that box. Yes, of remember? course. Remember? I know. She tries to tell them a million times. Right, but she didn't like. But it's the neighborhood, right? The neighborhood that they came to. They just they know think it's she's dead. she's. They think she's a drug addict. But it's like at the same time, this is a human. But nature But this is test. before that. I don't owe this person anything. I told you not to go down there. You insisted on going down there. Now you're gone. I'm out. I don't care. She's I'm promised. out. I'm a savage. She's promised. She's a woman of her word. No. My word ends when you make a dumbass decision. You're supposed to, you know, this this is what I have to look forward to. Like, this is your level of loyalty. (laughs) You just, like, he, he, I have loyalty to. I don't know that guy from a hole in the wall. For all I know, he's baiting me to go down there. Would you go down after me? I would go down after you, 100%. I'm not going down after the stranger who was in my Airbnb at, three in the morning who i don't know who i told him was there was a dangerous situation he's like i must see it for myself what that's not my problem all right i mean you're very angry about i this. am very angry Jesus. about it you're like <laughs> ramping up my goodness Sorry. <laughs> um wait geez where was I? <laughs> I don't know you you brought me into that so yeah so she goes down after him because she promised and she gets trapped down there it's a great setup the way that it ends up turning into our Justin Long character, right? I love they, they sort of split this movie into two parts. And very topical, you know, this character gets hit with the with the whole Me Too thing, right? Sexual there it assault is. allegation. Yep. And you're not unsure, like, well, is it real? Is it not? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Mm-hmm. You're in that same realm that you are with Keith of like, is he good or is he bad? They're setting That's it up true. like he's bad. That is true. There's a little bit of that. They parallel. give you that like that humorous goodness kind of nature of him, right? Like Keith looks like a harrowing character, but he's actually just a really nice guy who's rational and trying to, you know, communicate with you and figure out what's going on. And then you have Justin Long, who's like kind of goofy, ha ha ha, but he has this harrowing claim against him. And you're like, all right, what's what's real? When he makes that phone call. Oh, painful. He doesn't listen to anything anybody tells him. And we do find out it. actually somewhat early that he is guilty, right? They don't, yes. they really don't let it linger too long, which I think is cool because then he spirals into like this goofy version of himself where, you know, he's, cause he's got to sell, he's got to liquidate this property where obviously this craziness is going on. So he finds the secret door because everything's open and exposed. And like he's not all scared. Their, all their stuff is still there. He's like, what's going on? Not afraid at all. He's like, oh yeah. Someone yeah, will want to sleep in this this torture room with a half a bloody print on the wall. That's what's interesting is he finds the room, but he is like, he's excited about it. Like, oh, an extra room. Is, square can, footage. Can this be a bedroom? Like, this is square footage. I could tack Googling, this on to the like, value of my house. Yeah. Bingo. He, so he starts bringing a, a tape measure down there. Crazy. Insane. Scene. Like, Crazy all right, scene. this is how much, all right? I'll throw this on the listing. That can make it this. Like... And that's where you really see that this guy only cares about himself. Mm-hmm. 
Like and another, it, yeah, it's just you a great just know setup. now he's he's not good. It's a great setup. So I mean, these are basically our major characters, and they're all great. I mean, it, the setup is great. They all tie in really nicely. Um. You know, let's talk about the, the the creature that's living in this secret door because I think it's pretty freaking cool. It's brutal. This inbred, breastfeeding, Ugh. obsessed monster. Ugh. Like what, what, this is like a like a seven foot tall barbarian woman. I think the fact that it ends up being a woman as that, mm-hmm. I still am unclear though. Well, it is played by a man. Well, it, you know what I mean. It's supposed to be the mother. Matthew Patrick Davis. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean. It's a still a woman as like we understand it as the character, but it's like the barbarian, is it her or is it the person who created her? Yeah, so this is another one of my likes in this movie is Frank, and that's the guy played by Richard Brake, right? We get to go back in time and see, like, how did this monster come about, right? Mm-hmm. And we get this great intro to Frank way back in the day, and we get to see the neighborhood is all clean, but people are starting to sell. It's going to shit. What are you doing, Frank? I hate to tell you we're moving. But Frank's not going anywhere. And Frank doesn't give a crap. And what Frank is doing in this house is just, by God. The worst nightmare. Yeah. Worst nightmare for anyone. Yeah, he's kidnapping women. He's children. R-wording them. And then he's, <laughs> having, he's having children with them. And then he's having sex with the children, making it's babies from that. It's just an endless cycle endless, of abuse. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But again, I, I just, I don't know. I love this monster um really throughout the movie is really it's really, and the way they reveal it's the pretty monster. scary I yeah think. the monster um, reveals were done very well they're legit and the lighting of it is great right mm-hmm. in this this dungeony cavernous secret Which door tunnel i think you need it to be for this monster especially because like it defines the hunchback nature of the monster right like she's there's so, so many big great, and ducking down so they many hit, great shots yeah and they just hit the elements of like it all being believable when, the, when she ways. reaches out through the, the basement window. Yes. And the camera like slowly dollies out oh. and she just sort of slinks back down oh. into the basement. It's so good. Yeah. It looks so good. It's even crazier when you realize like that the people who exist in the neighborhood know that that thing is there and are still just like, yeah, we just hang out around here. And yeah, yeah, the guy's like, around. I told you not to go. That <laughs> it's like, what? Uh, like, just pick up your tent and go somewhere else. I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, really, the only thing I ended up like disliking yeah. really was the ending, like them falling off the water tower and not dying. Like, I just don't. First of all, I had to suspend my sense of reality a little bit on this because this is the, the opposite is supposed to happen when you have inbreeding to this magnitude. Oh, yeah. Right. You're not supposed to end up this seven foot tall superhumanly strong barbarian right you don't gain strength and during the inbreeding no. process you end up being crippled with like your hot, mental capacity you're highly depletes. disabled in yeah. so many your ways strength you get like you know deformed and that could, limbs that could be from one generation let alone like there's supposed to be Decades. like three generations here of so whatever that's what that's whatever yep. okay but them falling off the water tower and she doesn't die like And also remember she the mother jumps second and you're like that, I'm supposed did, to believe that they spin around or that she's like flying past Tess to save her which you know that is what it is mother like Tess actually gave in to be the baby so the mother is protecting her. That's yeah, of why course. I understand be. why the mother's motivated illogical. to jump. No, no. It's, illogical. it's illogical that she would beat Tess with how far after she jumped. Yeah. If if Tess falls first she's and she's already first. mid-fall, there's no way that the monster or the mother can no jump. No way. And then land underneath her. It just wouldn't happen. No way. Yeah. It's actually impossible. I want, I want Mythbusters to test this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That was really the only thing is like they don't stick the landing there, but everything else I really love. Acting, acting, I'm giving it a three is great. I always feel that the the ending of horror movies can make or break and it's Mm -hmm. tough to do. But acting, it should be a three. 
You're a three? Yeah. Okay. Um, effects, I'm giving it a three. I love all the the, the cool little, uh, the, the, all the props and stuff are great. Like all the practical stuff is really yeah. nice. How they do all the rooms and how they set designed this. It was really, really great. Yeah, I think it's also just, again, the juxtapositions of when it was a nice town to when it's not a nice town. And That's you know, cool, yeah. They really set it up well of even making yeah. him just... You know, he's just another neighbor in in the neighborhood, but like you go in his house and it's exactly what you'd expect that guy to live like. And it just yeah. gets worse over time. And obviously the monster looks great, right? Yeah. It's a great creature. Yeah, for sure. Uh, gore wise, I'm giving it a two. There are some gnarly cool kills in this, but again, it, the, the, the aim of the film is not to be a gore fest. I'm giving it a two and a half because I think there's other ways to be grossed out besides blood gore. And um, I think this opens up a whole nother game of like, would I survive this horror situation? Because I remember saying to you, would you drink the milk? Would I, oh, would I drink the milk? So there may not be gore, but like both those scenes of A, the bottle, and I know where that came from. But Mm. then because Justin Long's character doesn't take the bottle, now he has to partake in the teat of the mother monster. Mm -hmm. And that, I'm pretty sure I would die. I would definitely drink the milk like Tess does. <laughs> I, because you have to. Maybe the bottle, but then it gets, if you got to the teat, are you doing the teat? When she puts Justin Long up against her bosom to do the the, bre- the breastfeeding, it's rough. That's what I mean. Put I would do there. it, though. I would, you have to. You have to do it. But there's no guarantee you'll live. I don't know. I think I don't, I'd be dead. But, there's, but the last thing I want to do is make that thing angry. Are you I know, kidding me? I know. I guess you or you would out. just at that point you're just saying like I don't even want to get, I'm so traumatized just right kill now me. that I don't want to, I don't even want to get out of this yeah. just kill me yeah I don't know I think that's fair I would I would I would drink the milk I also, and I would drink it from the breast I also feel I would <laughs> I also feel I would never recover from the situation if I did make it out so I don't know that's what I mean yeah yeah um, scare factor I think this movie's scary I'm giving it yeah, a three one hundred percent. They, yeah. they have such great practical scares that, like, are all plausible. Right. But also, like, wait, that could have just been normal, but was it? Right. And it, it, it gets you, and it's not too many, and they're spread out enough between the story. So, yeah, I love it. I think it, it sets you up to be comfortable and then immediately uncomfortable. Yeah. There is one thing that kind of bothered me, and only because of my, my – and this doesn't have anything to do with the scare factor. It just I just thought of it now. When she goes through the basement window, all the glass, <laughs> and she's really not like nothing bad really happens to her. Yeah. But earlier this year, I put my hand through one of those basement windows. It was, and again, a nightmare. For I me. cut up my hand really, really bad. I was very calm in that situation, by the way. Well, right. it was painful. I, I had 16 stitches, and that was just my hand going through. Her whole body goes through this thing. Oh, yeah. We were and like, she's no crawling way. in it. And so, that stuff can cut you so quickly and easily and deep. Glass is no joke. It's no joke. So, I like, don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, to all our listeners, don't go running to your basement window and decide to just punch through the glass and test this theory out. We, no. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. <laughs> no. Um <laughs> Story wise, I'm giving it a three. Like I mentioned, that all those little nice writing details. I think mm-hmm. this is a very well written. What movie. would have make it a four for you? Uh, probably not doing the the weird ending with the water yeah. tower and all that. I just don't An think ending holds a lot of weight. Even when even the whole situation with them escaping the house like half ass, where like the homeless guy kind of takes him in, and he's like, she never comes over here, and she like bursts through like the cement wall, like boom. And I'm like, come on, like now it just, that really, it sort of deflated a tire for Yeah, me. she's like the Kool-Aid man. Yeah. Like, come on, yeah. get the fuck out of here. Yeah, all of a sudden she's the Kool-Aid man busting <laughs> yeah. through. All right, and then finally rewatchability. I'm giving this one a three. Um, this one, yeah, definitely. This I love how scary this is. Oh, and yeah. it, This was the second time I watched it, it still scared me. Right. That's, I still like forget some of the things because, again, you get so lost in the story and I love the character development and interaction and I pick it apart as I'm watching and then the scares are just hitting me mm-hmm. just as good the second time around. Agreed. Um, so then let's move on to our final segment here. We didn't Woo! get to do a game last time because we had three movies to get through. Three three-hour movies. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're going to bring back Head to Head. Um, cause this is always a fun one to do. And yep. I thought it would be cool since we're entering spooky season to pick 
the things that we like best about spooky season. Hell What's, yeah! What are our favorite things about it? What do we look forward to? Oh, the most? I've always loved spooky season since I was a kid. Like, mm-hmm. even though I was terrified of things, Halloween was like the greatest time of year for me. Yeah. And it still is. And it still is, yeah. <laughs> so for the first pick, you're going to go first here. Yes. So this is, you know, it's got to be your very favorite thing about this time of year. What do you look forward to the most? My number one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and this is hard. It's very tight, slim margin. Is costumes. The dressing up costume aspect. So Halloween itself, basically. Yeah, but there's other aspects of Halloween itself. Mm-hmm. But it's... The but fact that, that is when you're dressing up. Especially growing Multiple up. Multiple dress ups for you. Correct. There mm-hmm. was always like, and now that I'm old and people don't go out because we have kids and our friend groups and things like that, <laughs> but, you know, you would kind of spend at least three weekends doing things. Mm-hmm. Like when we were young, it was always like, oh, our favorite bar is doing a Halloween party night and you go Yeah, but what up. about now? What do you look forward to now? Oh, still the same thing. It's still the same it's thing. It's still the same thing because now it's just exemplified because I have one moment and I obviously put so much effort into our costumes yeah yeah. i'm so meticulous down to like the shoes or the jewelry or like the little nuance of like what it is because i just love that creative aspect of like making something up on my own we've stopped even doing like oh we'll be this person this character it's all original Mm -hmm. and i love that okay all right so making original characters and costumes for the win yeah which is basically that's done for our Halloween party. Yes. Right. But I also now get to do it with my little bestie. So I get a second costume. Mm-hmm. Which is very great. Well, you know, I'm going to just go out on a limb here. Ugh. But my favorite thing, obviously, would be the, hollow, the horror movies. Yeah. Right? This is my thing is horror movies. Yeah. Now, obviously. Cliche. You could watch horror movies any time of year. But I think most people who aren't like horror movie fanatics it hits different they think about this time of year being like maybe we'll watch a scary like people that don't really watch horror movies like, yeah. maybe we'll watch a scary movie right <laughs> but for me it's like yeah but again i love that it's sort of like it's more like in the vibe this time of year like yeah. people everybody's watching horror movies so it, it elevates the joy of it for me yeah and everyone and then everyone's talking about it and that's mm-hmm. also where we get to jump and we in get and new like, movies like the new yeah. horror movies are good this is like a fun time for me because i'm like i know where i'm gonna get something new and i love just being able to give recommendations because we've watched so much like we've mm-hmm. done this podcast we're on that episode 34 and like we still have so many movies we've watched and loved and we haven't even talked about yet mm-hmm and All we right. still got more to watch. So what's your second pick? So my second pick is going to be trick-or-treating. Trick-or-treat? You don't go trick-or-treating. Yes, I do. I go with my bestie. Oh, uh, that's right. You have this now. I get to pass it's on in, the it's tradition. It's been reinvigorated for you. I didn't yes, think about this. Because, yeah, I didn't get to do it all these years. I did it all the way till I was like 18. Mm-hmm. I didn't give a shit. I'm here in a costume treat. Treat me now. And I will take advantage of this with my niece. That's my bestie. My two nieces now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will go in full costume to match this them. This is great. As, you have many years of trick-or-treating to look forward to. Oh, I'm so to. excited. I have yeah. at least 19 years to go. That's amazing. Although now that I think about it, I was left to handle the trick-or-treaters by myself last Sorry. year. And I'm not the I'm not the biggest fan of it. <laughs> well, that's also my other reason for liking it. Yeah. Is that when I is that do I it hate myself- it? No, no. <laughs> when I couldn't do it myself, I love making the trick or treat bags. Yeah. And no, you do make it very easy for me. You put together a nice little bag. Yeah. And I just have to hand it and you know. Whatever. It's a bag Happy or full size candy bars. That's the way to do it. But mm-hmm. either way, I enjoy that and. The kids seeing our house and being like, what is that? We got going on inside. Yeah, our house is um, very, very loudly Halloween. Yeah. It's an event, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so my second pick, uh, I'm going to go with the haunted houses. I love going to the haunted houses, especially on Long Island. I mean, there's some really great ones. Yep. The Playhouse one is great. Mm-hmm. What's the one that I really like, too? That's on, It's in like that warehouse, put like off the most- Oh, um. I don't remember the name of it, but that oh one's really God. great too. That Something one's with huge. Doom in it. 
that one's huge. That's what's cool about them too. Is like you, you th- some of them are expensive. Like the Gateway Playhouse one is expensive, but, but it's you get your net. money's worth. It's like four. It's like a half hour More. at least. No, it's forty five minutes to an hour. Yeah, it's great. If you are with people that are like running through, but we like to. That one has now. like the claustrophobic rooms yeah. and stuff, and, and we they take pump our time, and they pump the smells in. Yeah. Like, oh, the smells. It's not enough to just have like the you get rotting the air corpses, burst, the smells. They have yeah. like everything. Yeah, and. Like, we really look at the sets. Like, we walk through and try to go slow. They do a pretty good job with the sets. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I love it. All right. So third pick for you. We each get four. I will say the pumpkin picking because it gives me. a good one. A lot of these are rooted in my nostalgia. Like, this is what I hold on to from a kid. Right. And I guess, you know, we're fortunate enough. We have pretty good pumpkin picking on Long Island. Oh, my God. We have the best. Because if you're going and they throw your pumpkins out on a field, that's a pumpkin purchase. I'm going pumpkin picking, which means I want it on the vine and I want to mm-hmm. take it off the vine. What's cool too is like they do it at all the local farms yeah. and they have like some of some of those farms have just amazing like you can get these great pies, you can get apple cider donuts, they oh, have like the, the cider donuts. They have the turkey legs and stuff. The turkey and it's no, it's great. Tur- the and spiral potato on a stick. Love that. That's also really good. Delish. And then they have like music at these things. Always have music going. And it's a good atmosphere. Yeah, you can do a little farm shopping. It's a nice way to also support local. Mm-hmm. So I love, and I just love it because it's friends and family and everyone just has a good time. You could sneak some apple picking in there if you do it on a good week. Yeah. Yep. Um, so then my third pick, I'm going to go with Halloween, the Halloween parties. The parties are great, man. <laughs> Right. I mean, and that kind of goes hand in hand with, you know, the dress up thing, obviously. But the like being there, there's still something about it. What I love about it actually is like because we've made a big deal of it over the years and we'll host a big party for everyone. And obviously we do it up with the characters and the stories and the decorations and stuff. But it's really created this tradition amongst our friends and everybody makes a point to try to make it to this one part. It's like the one house party that yeah. everybody looks forward to. And everyone really goes in on the costumes. Great. Like they really try to yeah, yeah. outdo themselves the way we do. Yeah, and they try really, to guess what the party is. They really do respect it and they try <laughs> to have come with a good costume and we'll play, we play games and everybody tries to participate as yeah. best they can. It's great. It's a lot of fun. 100%. All right, what's your last pick? All right, my last pick is going to be decorations. Mm. Because much like costumes, I am very curated about what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I am very careful, right? Like what I what goes where and what's the vibe. And I'm good at reusing stuff, but making it look new. You bought some fresh. cool new decorations this year. We can't year. talk about it. Yeah. But we, you, got some, you got some cool stuff, I thought. <laughs> I did. It took some convincing on your part, but... Yeah. Well, you know, I I always have a problem with like, every once in a while, you'll try to be like, I want to get this giant skeleton. I still want it. His name is Skelly. But the problem is the skeleton has eyeballs. Now it does. That is uh, immediately. uh, No. It didn't always. I'm not featuring any kind of a skeleton with eyeballs. That is (sighs) ludicrous. (sighs) Ludicrous. All right. Well, the one that we got does have eyeballs. Ew. No, but that's a different thing. Okay, fine. Whatever. Um, <sighs> all right, so decorations are your number four. So my last pick, what am I... You know what? I hate that I'm that I'm left with this because this is such the traditional, like, <laughs> foofy girl thing, uh, especially on Long Island. It's like all the pumpkin-themed treats. But I'm not going to lie. Like, there is something about, like, not even just the pumpkin stuff, but, like, the treats this time of year. Yeah. Are, they're Talk all really good. Top tier. So I, I, and I'm not really too much of a sweets person, but it's a good time of year for like, you know, interesting. Like I'm the apple home. cider donuts, you know, I love. Yes. That's like something, especially warm on the farm. But I also got you the, I had those pumpkin blondies and you were like, this is really good. Those are, yeah, the brownies that are made of you pumpkin. You can't basically. live with me and not like treats. It's not possible. It's so good. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to go with. All right. All right. So what did you end up with? All right. So I've got costumes. Mm-hmm. Trick or treating, pumpkin picking, and decorations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I have um, the horror movies, of course. Yep. I have the haunted houses, mm-hmm. the Halloween parties, and all of the seasonal delicious treats. Yep. I think I'm gonna crush you. You might, but I might win with the nostalgias. All right. If if you're if someone is for the nostalgia, I got you covered. 
All right, that'll do it for this episode. We're going to, um, I think next week's episode comes out on Friday the 13th. So, you know, despite our best efforts to avoid doing anything Jason, oh. I think we're going to have to watch a couple of the Jason movies. Oh. I think that's... <laughs> Let's do it. I'm so mad. I think it's a great choice. I'm, I think we're going to have... a raging today. We're going to have a blast with those, I think. Ugh. Yep, get ready, y'all. I mean, it makes sense. We gave, you know, Mike Myers his due when Halloween came out. We were around Halloween time. Well, we got to do it for, you know, another it. great it American is a slasher. It's Friday the 13th. I get it. It's a great American slasher. Got to respect <sighs> it. We'll do it. All right. Well, that'll <laughs> do it. Thank you so much for watching and being back with us again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, Review. comment, tell us you hate our opinions, tell us you agree with them. We want to hear it all. So yes. find us everywhere at Me Dark Presents on all your social platforms, all your streaming services. And remember, we, we don't, don't give, give awards, awards for art. art. All I want to know is who can say.